So the first one, I'm going to look at telescoping series. So these are series that we can find a sum, usually, um, and we can usually find the sum because we're going to expand the series and then a bunch of stuff is going to cancel and it's going to shrink back down. It's kind of this telescoping effect that you have on the series. So let's do an example. Let's look at the sum from n equals 2 to infinity um, of 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. All right, so first thing I'm going to do on this, I'm going to expand it. So I'm going to plug in 2, I'm going to plug in 3, I'm going to plug in 4, etc. All right, so when I plug in 2, I get 1 over well, 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1, that's 3. Plus, I plug in 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, so that's 1 half minus, I'm plugging in 3 right here, so 1 fourth, plus, let's see, I'm going to mar mark these, I tend to get lost where I'm at, this was n equals 2, this was n equals 3, okay, so now we're at n equals 4, so 1 over 4 minus 1, that's 1 third, minus 1 over 4 plus 1, that's 1 fifth, so that was n equals 4. Now n equals 5, so when n equals 5, we would have uh, 1 over 5 minus 1 is 1 fourth minus 1 over, um, 1 over 5 plus 1, that's 1 sixth. Okay, so now what I do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what cancels. And there's some stuff that cancels out of this. We have a positive one-third and a negative one-third. We have a positive one-fourth and a negative one-fourth. Now, the next thing that I do is I look at what is left over. So kind of my third step here is I look at the end. And at the end of this, I have one two terms, and that goes along with one, two different ends. So I look at the end, and I write the last terms with ends in them. The last term is going to be n. The one the next one is going to be the one where I plug in n minus 1, the, the one before the nth term. Now, because I had two different things left over, I'm going to have two things at the end. So if I kept going with this, if I kept on with a plus dot dot dot, at the very end I would have two things left over. I would have the n minus 1 and the nth term. So if I plug in n minus 1 into this last one, I get 1 over n minus 1 minus 1, that's n minus 2 minus 1 over n minus 1 plus 1, that's n, plus the nth term, which is exactly what we started with, 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So that's the plus. This is continuing from, continuing from up there. Okay, so... What would happen in between here? So now, let's see if I do this in the next step. So I look at the last terms and I write down my last terms. Then I'm going to cancel the middle terms. Cancel the middle and take a limit. So and maybe maybe it wasn't best to use ends in here. I normally do, but maybe maybe I should have used like capital N right there and capital N. So that would have been a capital N and a capital N. The only reason I'm saying this differently is because there we started with a little N and it goes to infinity. And so when we write out 
a limit. What we want to do is take a limit as something new goes to infinity. And so maybe it's best to use a capital N, not a small one. So we're going to take a limit as n goes to infinity. I need to cancel the middle terms. Now if I continued with this, with this dot, 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 somewhere in there, then the next thing we'd have a positive one-fifth, and then in the next thing we'd have a negative one-sixth. And then at the very end, notice that these two were on the um, left or the right-hand side of the two terms there. This was on the right-hand side there and on the right-hand side there, and so the right-hand side of that one would cancel and the right-hand side of that one would cancel. The pattern continues throughout the whole thing. It's always the right-hand term that would end up canceling. Um, so when I get to the very end of all of this, I have the limit as n goes to infinity of, in the beginning, I'm left with 1 plus 1 half, um, and then um, plus, everything else canceled, except the 1 over n minus 2 and the 1 over n minus 1. These guys will go to 0, and I will be left with 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And that would be my sum. This would converge. Okay, so once again with telescoping series, I expand it into some big thing. I cancel. After the cancellations, I look and see what's left over, and I write an nth term or, or terms with n's in them, depending on how many things I have with, with numbers that were left over. So once that is done, then I would, um, then I kind of shrink it all back down. I eliminate all the canceled terms, including everything in the middle, shrink it back down and take a limit. Usually what happens is some terms to go to infinity and it will end up converging. Okay, now I wanna look at more. I wanna look at one more example here um, with series. All right, this is a little cutout of the sheet that I gave you with all of the tests for series. And we're going to start, and we're going to look at this first one, um, this one on the divergence test. So these are all tests to see whether certain series will converge or diverge. Now, there are some real keys to this one. First of all, this test cannot be used to show convergence. This is the divergence test. What it says is if you take the limit as n goes to infi infinity of the sequence of terms of the series, and that is not zero, then it'll diverge. So if you get that the limit is zero, so if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, if it equals zero, then there's no result here. No result, you'd have to go do something else. So an example of something that we can't do with this, if we had the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n, then if we took the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n, that's that a sub n, that is equal to zero. And so we don't know. We cannot show divergence with the divergence test um, unless it's not zero. Okay, so here's some ones that would work. So another example, if we look at the sum from n equals zero to infinity of three n squared plus two all over n minus n squared. And this one, if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of three n squared plus two, all over n minus n squared. That limit, we've got equal powers of um, in the polynomials, and the number in the numerator is three, the number in the denominator is negative one, so that goes to negative three. 
What this means is that the sequence converges to three, but the series diverges by the divergence test. Once you get used to writing out in your work, um, writing out the test that you use and your conclusion, whether the series converges or diverges, um, and then the steps used in the test. So in this case, with the divergence test, it's, it's showing that limit. All right, let's do a couple more examples here. So let's look at the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 5 halves raised to the n. So we take a limit as n goes to infinity of 5 halves to the n. This is one that we did in the last video. 5 halves is bigger than 1. Some number bigger than 1 raised to something really big. We're going to get infinity. Infinity is not zero, and so we can conclude that this diverges by the divergence test. And one more, one more example. Let's look at the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1. Now, if we take a limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, um, this limit, you get this negative 1 to the infinity, which is, this is indeterminate. And we could go through and actually find that limit. It involves using a natural log and then using e to undo that. But as far as this one, this one is concerned, it, it, it's a little bit easier than that. Now, let's just start writing out this. Let's expand that, expand that sum. So when we plug in 2, two so if, we, if we take negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive. So that would be 2. Then the next term, we would have 3. So 3 would give us a negative 1 plus 1, and that would be 0. 4 would give us 1 plus 1, and that would be 2. 5 would give us 0. 6 would give us 2. You, you can see what would happen here is we would have a bunch of zeros, and we'd be adding a bunch of 2s, so this would actually go to infinity which means that this series would diverge. Now, we didn't use the divergence test here, actually, and we could have if we found that limit, but that limit is a little bit complicated. Um, we didn't have to use the divergence test. If you just kind of expand out the terms, we could see that this diverges. Um, and one more pretty simple example. Um, if we just look at negative 1 to the n, if you plug in 2, we get 1. If you plug in 3, we get negative 1. When you add those two things together, you get 0. Well, now plug in the next term. You're going to add 1. Well, now you have 1. When you plug in the next term, you have minus 1. Now you're back to 0. When you plug in the next term, <laughs> you're back to 1. And you can see that this sum will never add to anything. So you could keep on adding numbers here, but you're never going to actually get a number. So you, um, let's just write that down. So you never get, you never get an S that's in the reals. You never get to some number. You can't, because the next time you add it and you get zero, the next time you add it and you get one. Um, and so because of that, it will diverge because of the oscillating property in there, it would diverge. Okay, so today we just looked at a couple. We looked at kind of what a series is. We looked at 
telescoping series where we can find the sum. That's sort of unusual to be able to actually find the infinite sum. But telescoping, we can. And then we looked at the divergence test, one of the first tests um, to see whether in a series converges or diverges.